Hey everybody, it's Margo. Guys, I'm such a fucking actress. And Lydia. Strong black woman over here. But you already know why we're here. Pop off, pop off, sis. I want commando on public transportation, huh? Oh my god. I love a good lazy river because I'm lazy and I like water. Pop off, <laughs> pop off, sis. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, I'm kinda hungover right now. The content you may not want, but deserve. Pop off, pop off. I think I popped off about that. You popped off. Pop, pop off, sis. Welcome back, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome me, welcome you to this exciting guest episode. We do not want to miss we this one, guys. Oh, you do not. We love a guest. It is someone so exciting. It's been a minute. It's been a minute since we've had a guest on, but what a better way to come back with one than this individual. Yes. Yeah. So stay tuned because insert here is coming up next. The Bravo lover in me is freaking out right now. I'm screaming. I'm screaming. If you love <laughs> If you love Bravo or reality TV in general, you probably already know our next guest. David Yontef is the host of the Behind the Velvet Rope podcast, the pop culture podcast dedicated to Real Housewives, Bravo celebrities, and other relevant icons with new episodes five days a week, Monday through Friday. Um, with his relaxed, casual interview style, he gets to the bottom of all of Bravo, reality TV, and pop culture's most important and pressing questions. He goes there. Please welcome the one and only David Yontef. Welcome, David. Hello. Now, I kind of ruined that because I talked over your intro. So you did. <laughs> I did. I said, I'm so happy to be here because I didn't think we were on and I was just thought we were making small talk. So sorry <laughs> to ruin your intro. No, didn't. Do you feel it's like we're good? Different. Do I need to do it again? <laughs> I didn't hear oh, you. I mean, what an introduction. Like, thank you for having me. You're welcome. We're so excited to have you. I so appreciate I honestly, I have to tell you, I <laughs> thought that the DMs from me were fake. I was like, this isn't David. Like, why, why is he doing this? Why is he talking on our <laughs> podcast? Why? <laughs> Listen, I respond to everyone. Like, if it's on, well, I mean, yeah. If it's on Instagram, I really make it a point to try to get back to everyone. I was literally just having this conversation this week that I am on the verge. I mean, no ego, no ego in this statement, but I am on the verge of making a post on my page and saying goodbye. I cannot respond anymore <laughs> yeah. because I am ready to have, I just topple over. We're not there yet, but we're one <laughs> step away from like, I just can't respond anymore. And that sounds the most so obnoxious and like there's such an ego, but it's not. It's literally like I will either check myself into a mental hospital <laughs> or I can respond to DMs and get back to everyone. But I did get back and we're not there yet. But this week has just been like, it's crazy. It's so busy. I mean, right? I, it's crazy. You know, there's a lot going on in the world, in our country, especially. But I mean, you're so busy Monday through Friday. And then on top of that, doing things like this is like, I can't imagine how booked you are. And, and selfishly for our ego, we're like, thank God we got in here before. <laughs> yeah. like, and it's not like happening off. today, but it's just, it's lately that I'm like, I, I get why people say they just don't answer DMs, you know? Mm -hmm. But I, I like to get back to people, you know? Like if it's on Instagram, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like once you hand your social media over to someone, it's a slippery slope. It's like, I don't think there's any way to do it. I think you either need to own it or just hand it off to someone and say, run my Instagram and don't ever keep me posted. That's, that's a little too scary for me. Yeah, no, it's yeah. a lot of trust there. Because I'm like a control freak. I'll be like, did you post? Is this new show up today? <laughs> you know, is, are people responding? Like, it's just yeah. not going to work. Now, other social media platforms, I have given control to other people. But Instagram is truly me and will remain me forever, probably. Yeah. Well, we have to ask before we start questions, uh, do you have anything to drink? Because I brought a vodka cocktail in honor of you. Okay, so you're not going to be happy with my answer. Oh, <laughs> I'm choosing myself, David. I, I have so too. much work to do after this. So I am, this is not a shameless plug. I am drinking out of my Behind the Velvet Rope mug. Oh, yes. yes. But it, it is night. I, you know, for everyone listening, it's nighttime and I am drinking coffee. I, it's sad, I know. I have this is not I you, have, David. <laughs> you did tell me to bring a drink, but 
next time I will bring a drink, I promise. Well, you did bring a drink technically. So technically I did, but I'm glad that you guys have a drink and you did. And trust me, I thought, and I'm just like, I just need to, you know, maybe later I'll have a cocktail. Okay. okay. You'll need one. It's a Friday um, night. You might as is. well treat yourself. Who drinks coffee at night, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah, crazy. I, I just have to ask because I'm genuinely so curious about, so I was doing a little research and I saw that you made the transition from starting in corporate tax law to then transitioning over to this Bravo Liberty world and starting a podcast and making one where people feel comfortable to come in and interview with you and spill the tea. And so how did that even happen? Like how, how did that even start? Well, okay. So yes, I, you know, I went to law school and I practiced corporate tax law. You know, listen, I, there are some steps in between there. Nothing right. so interesting, you know, but I practice corporate <laughs> tax law. I say on my show all the time, I am like a closet smart person and I just don't want to talk about anything of any substance at this <laughs> point in the world. <laughs> you know, listen, we get into a lot of, you know, real issues on my, you know, show. I mean, you know, I, I, I'm starting to interview, not just Bravo people like actresses and Anytime it's like an actress, I have a whole bunch coming up. Like I want to talk about the Me Too movement and like, right. especially if someone like I interviewed an actress from yesteryear, yesterday, it's going to be out whenever. And I just want to talk about like how far like women in acting. So like, I mean, we get into some topics, right? but I really don't want to talk about life. So, mm -hmm. you know, I am smart. I practice law. I quit that. I fell into like recruiting. I ran HR and recruiting at a bunch of different companies most notably Martha Stewart. That seems what people want to talk about. Like I worked for Martha Stewart for a hot minute <laughs> and I buy a hot minute. I mean like two years. And then like I worked <laughs> for companies that merged and they kept merging and merging. And like when my last company merged, I was like, I don't think I want to do this anymore. Right. And then, you know, listen, I put myself in the way of these people. Like I wish there was some gracious, classy way to say it. But unlike many people, I don't like to bullshit around. So it's just like, I'm like, this isn't, you know, this isn't Madonna. This isn't like Taylor Swift. We're not talking about like Ariana Grande. These are like real people that are on social media with, yeah. you know, so let's, you know, I mean, look at living in New York City helps. I mean, you have New York Housewives, Summer House, you have the Million Dollar Listing Boys, you have Jersey Housewives. So I was like, I'm just gonna put myself in this situation and start. So I started meeting these people and, you know, listen, it's like organic. It's organic. You don't just meet like 15 people that are on Bravo and say, we're all going to be best friends. I mean, it doesn't work <laughs> that way. Like you really do get to know people and you just gravitate towards and are friends with the people that you're friends with. So I kind of became friends with some of these people. Yeah. Ish. And then- yes. Give you know, yourself more credit, you, your friend. <laughs> your friend. So then, you know, eventually I was like, all right, well, this has to be some type of business. It's not like you're using anyone. It's, I compare it to if you go to work in an office, I mean, this is an old comparison because none of us go to <laughs> offices anymore, but it's like, if you go to work and after work, you have drinks with your colleagues. So you know, you don't like everyone. You meet, you might go to drinks with 10 people. You might like five of them. And then there's the other 150 people in the office that you have no interest in having a drink with. Yeah. It's just natural, but you have friends at work. So I was like, how can I turn this into a job? Mm. And I went through a bunch of different, like, you know, okay, you know, just, I, I don't know, how is this going to work? And I'm like, it just came to me, like, maybe this is a podcast. So when I started behind the velvet row, my goal was one day a week, we would do an interview and one day a week, I would tell a story because I'd be hanging out with these people and I'd look around and I'd be like, it's in between seasons for Million Dollar Listening. It's in between seasons for Beverly Hills Housewives. All this stuff that's happening now, there's no cameras. And these are like, this is crazy. This one's <laughs> getting another drink. I think she's going home with him. This one's falling off a bar stool. This one just got in a fight with that one. I'm like, these are stories that, people, no one is watching any of this and I'm sitting here watching it all. And now I'm going to talk about it. Yeah. So that's kind of how it started. 
you know, and I was like, listen, first of all, if anything is really confidential, I wouldn't talk about it. You know, like I've been in situations where someone's like, yeah, and I'm probably going to divorce him or like, yeah, you know, that was fake or whatever. Like, yeah, we don't have it. Uh, no, of course that stuff would never like, you just know what you, cause you don't want to lose access. So I started my podcast to telling my, my pilot episode was I was in Florida and I went to a dinner with like Rick Leventhal, Kelly Dodd, Dolores Catania and Ramona Singer. It, that was a true dinner. I was sitting right there and I'm like, this is insane what's going on now. Guess what <laughs> Ramona had the Branzino and the Martini in front of her before any of us even not open the menu, sat down. People were still standing. <laughs> that drink was there. She had a whole fish coming and I'm like, yeah, this is what people expect this to be, but it's really happening. So, you know, and of course I had to sit next to Ramona because, you know, she treats me like crap. Like, God forbid I sit next to like, you know, the patron saint of America, Dolores, who I know. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, I'm like a glutton for punishment. I'm going to sit next to Ramona and just, you know, we're, she was giving me an attitude. And then I, I mean, I was literally sitting right next to her. And then she looked at me and I was like, Ramona, I was like, you can give me an attitude for the next like 45 minutes that we're sitting at this dinner, but I'm just going to sit here and I'm just going to love you. I am going to, there's <laughs> going to be so, I mean, I'm just, the love is going to, and then she took another sip of her drink and like just broke down. And then it was like a love affair. And then I left with her phone number. I mean, I've never used it. I'm sure she's changed her phone number, but I mean, I had her phone number. Wow. So I'm like, that's, I mean, of course there was a thousand steps in between, but I'm like, maybe someone's interested in this story. And yeah, so that's how I launched my podcast. And I'm like, oh, people are interested in this. Yeah. That's really how it started. It was really just like, a natural progression. I mean, other than the fact that I'm like, I'm going to become friends with these people, which is not so natural. I put myself in the way of that, but the podcast just started. And then, you know, it's really COVID changed the show in the sense that I had a lot of time and I'm like, oh my God, because I started doing interviews and I'm like, because I knew all these people, it was able to book them to come on my show. Right. So I was like, there's so many people that want to talk. We have to go to three days a week. Then more people want, I'm like, so that's how we went from two days to five days a week. And now it's just, I have a Patreon account. So I still tell my stories and all this other stuff on Patreon. You know, like if you want my private thoughts and you want to know what happened when this one texted me last night, you got to go pay for it. I right. mean, mama has to eat a little bit, <laughs> but really it's five days a week of interviews. So it's not like, um, you know, now give me some money here. Also, we don't just cover Bravo. It is 90% Bravo. It'll always be 90% Bravo, but- I don't know, from like a business model at one point, I was like, what if Bravo goes away? What if I piss yeah. everybody off? I mean, there's a lot of things I'm like, we need to branch out here, people. So now it's like I cover like Drag Race and Bachelor. Bachelor Nation is freaking huge. It's, I'm part of that. I right. love, well, I eat that up. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. Like people don't realize, like, it's just, I am, I work. I have no attitude. I work like 24 hours a day, but like, I'm just a business person. It's just how my mind thinks. So mm -hmm. when we're hundred percent in one box, no, scrap the business model. We need to regroup. So, you know, everyone's getting entertained, but this is a business. Mm -hmm. And I just was like, wait a second. Let me look at these numbers on, wait, Bachelor Nation is what? Like how <laughs> many people watch a week? All right. So why are, and mind you, I also love the bachelor. It's just, I gave up on it for a while, but I'm back. So like, we just had Lacey Mark on from. Yes. Nick so that like, and that's the thing, like my podcast gets covered in the press all the time. So like she said stuff, it's all over the papers now. It's funny. She's on my list. I have to check in with her this weekend. Cause like when you get press, I check in with you. Like, I mean, listen, if you're not happy and you're pissed off about the press mm -hmm. you got, then also, I mean, like in a way, fuck off because I didn't, you see, do you see these 15 quotes? Uh, it doesn't, my name's not next to them and I didn't yeah. say any of them. So, yep. but no, no, most people don't get upset, but I still like to check in and just be like, you know, you know, cause you, you, you worry, like, you know, are you not going to come on my show? Cause you think you get like massive headlines. Well, I mean, it's a good thing for me, but like, I don't want people to be pissed off. So, but that we have a lot of bachelor nation stuff coming a lot. Oh, and then we've done like pop culture, like Melissa Rivers and like Perez Hilton. Mm -hmm. And I have some more, like we were starting to get into like actresses and comedians. So it's just growing. But it'll always be mostly Bravo. It'll always be, and really if anyone is really paying attention and really 
like a super listener, you would see there's a pattern. Like I do try to put one housewife or friend of every week, yep. which we've stuck to. I guess if I ever run out of housewives, I'll cross. I mean, we have people back on, but like, I think it's pretty safe to say there'll always be a housewife or a friend of each week. Like we had Elise Lane from Roni this week. Last week we had Lisa Barlow in one of the only podcasts. I think the only podcast interview she did, I think. I, mean, I don't. You, she- you got her before Andy did because of the whole debacle. <laughs> I, should have I, know. Time. I know. And that's the other thing, like timing is everything. And just, but it all, it all just works out. Like there's nothing easy about any guest. It's the rare exception for a lot of reasons, but it all somehow works out. Mm. And we're not slowing down anytime soon. Like when I went to five days a week, I was like, I don't know, this can't last. So like, we'll do it for a month. And then I was like, okay, it's COVID 2020 sucks. We'll do it for 2020. Well, I can tell you based on like, we have like a wait list. Like it's, it's here. Like, I don't think we're ever not going to be five days a week, at least for then, you know, unless something in life changes, which is possible. But right now it's the opposite. I can't keep up. I can't keep up. That's like a podcaster's wet dream. Like that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, you know, like there are negatives, like, you know, everyone and their mother has an opinion. They slip into my DMs. It's like, uh, all right. I mean, like, imp- listen, I have a thick skin. Part of me is like, you know, I should be so flattered that you're this invested and you have this many details about what's going on five days a week on my show. So really (laughs) I am thrilled, but anyone that has had a suggestion, an idea, trying to help me better my podcast, I've had, I'm aware of it all. Like I'm aware of all the issues. Like, I mean, there's not a lot of issues, but just, you know, like I appreciate people trying to be helpful, but you're just like, yeah. I get it. I thought of this. <laughs> or, you know, someone's like, I have a brilliant idea for our guest. Like, are you ready? I'm like, yeah. They're like, Bethany Frankel. And I'm like, huh, wow. This is a brilliant idea. Thanks. Like, <laughs> Bethany is not coming on behind the velvet rope. I mean, we're big. We're great. We're in the top 20. We get lots of press. We have great, but she's not coming on. Like, thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> I know I'm being a bitch and I appreciate everyone, but people are just like, here's some advice. And it's like, yes, trust me. I've thought of Bethany. Like it's not happening. Like (laughs) I shouldn't be complaining. Do you you see what happens after people listening to this are like, God, he's so nasty. I'm really not. I'm just like telling you that these are, these are the behind the scenes things. You know how it is. Everyone thinks running a podcast is like turn on a mic and chit chat. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I mean, like you literally cover it all. Like just listening to your journey is so interesting, especially with podcasts. And so that really, you know, we're an up and coming podcast. We're definitely growing, but you know, slow, but steady wins the race. <laughs> so just any advice you have for us, you know, like I know when you had Joe DeLaresa on recently on your show, you were talking about, to her about how consistency is key with your podcasting and having segments and an intro and outro. We definitely stick to that, but you know, anything else you think is important? Yeah. Like I definitely, I stand by consistency. Like I can't tell you, like I notice podcasts that put out an episode and then four weeks later, there's another one. And then two weeks later, there's another one. And then like three months later, there's another one Mm -hmm. And like, it actually works. Like Kim Zolciak does that. Like Brad Goreski does that. Like, oh yeah. So like, sure. Kim Zolciak can do that. And so can Brad Goreski when they're bored at home, Brad could say, Gary, go in the other room. I have to do a podcast. And, you know, I just booked Leah Michelle because I just dressed her great. And it will be in the top 10. Mm -hmm. And same thing with Kim Zolciak when she's like, oh, all right. I have something to say about Nini. Great. That's going to be in the top. Short of what, if you're not a well-known public figure, (laughs) you cannot do that. It's like, it sounds so basic, but people, and the other thing is like, you know, if you put your podcast out Monday at 9 a.m., it should go out between 8 and 10. Fine. You want to put out an hour early, an hour late? Fine. 9 o'clock should not be 4 p.m. because it's not perfectly edited or something. It's just right. get it out. Like, what's the problem? Mm-hmm. So I think consistency with date and time is key. It is about the listener. I care about the person having a good show. I'm not putting out shit. You know, I mean, look, we're getting Lisa Barlow. No one else did. That's not easy. But, you know, it's it's a business model. I mean, someone the other day DM me and said that the ads annoy them. Well, guess what? 
<laughs> you can DM me back and I can send you the amount of dollars that need. If listen, you want to deposit something in my account by Sunday at midnight. Yep. <laughs> if you want to give me the exact, actually, I'll give you a discount of a hundred of like $50 because the amount of energy for me to record these damn ads, <laughs> if you want to pay the same amount minus $50, you'll never hear an ad again in my podcast. Yeah. Right. right. That, sorry. I'm going to do ads from now till the day the podcast is over. Cause that's how I eat. Right. So, and you have that business mind. So I just think like, I don't know. So consistency, if it's a business, just keep that in mind. And I just think, you know, I think just doing it. No, thank you for that advice. Does that, that really answer your question or did I just go on a rant? No, no, <laughs> you, you, everything and more. And you've been broken down, you know, between hobby and business. It's, it's all valuable. And us. like, it's fine to be a hobby. It's mm-hmm. fine. It's just, yeah. I think the mistake that people make is they believe their own fabulousness. And they feel, you know, like, yeah, people become YouTube sensations or TikTok sensations overnight. I get it, but that is still the rare case. Yeah. A million other people on TikTok that are trying. So it's like, I think people think like, I'll turn on the mic and I'll be fabulous and fun and it, an audience will find us and I will have a TV show and make lots of money. It doesn't work that way. Why are you like reading out my thoughts out loud? I, know. <laughs> I mean, you know, these are all good things, but it's almost like you have to like work the back end. It's not just like yeah. book a guest or don't book a guest. It's not the form, be fabulous. I think that's what, I don't know if everyone does that. They just are like, I'm great and wonderful and blah, blah. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It takes work and uh, kind of like a, just a random curious question. And before you answer, I'm going to guess. So you're on Behind the Velvet Rope, the logo that you have for it. Are those supposed to be certain housewives? Is it random? But I'm going to give you my guesses first before you answer. Okay. It's like, wait, no, no, no. I don't uh-huh. know. Uh, sorry, David. Uh, <laughs> okay. My guesses are Sonia, Kyle, Jill, and then on the end, it's either Dorit, Tinsley, or Brandy. I don't know which one. Okay, go ahead. Well, first of all, you know my logo apparently better than I do. (laughs) Here's the easy answer. It really wasn't supposed to be anyone in particular. Like, there are certain housewives that I used as examples, like you know, don't copy this, but like, you know, this is what these women need to look like. I have to say the first, and I've never even said this before, the first incarnation of this logo, I got it back and like the women were way too young. I mean, that's not a diss. They were way too young looking and they weren't like as wealthy or glamorous looking. So I had to like tweak all this stuff. Uh, Literally the first iteration was so bad. Yeah, I was like, okay, I mean, I I need to pay this person, but I'm just going to pay them and like, go and make your changes. And I mean, it's going to go in the garbage that literally it was so bad. I'm like, this woman's going to send me this back. I'm going to tell her it's great. I'm going to pay her. And then I'm going to find someone else because I don't even know (laughs) how we're going to get from this, what I see in front of me to what you now see. But then it came back and I was like, oh, wow. Like, you know, we weren't done, but we made like leaps and bounds. It's really not supposed to be anyone in particular i have to say there is one that i think more than anything looks like sonia yes the bun yeah and then like okay i could see some jill in there i could see some kelly ben simone in there i could even see a Teresa in there there are things that i but it's really not supposed to be anyone okay Okay. thank you for clearing that up like really when i look at it i'm like one of these looks like Sonia so much so that I almost made them do it over. I was like, this looks just screaming Sonia to me, but I didn't. And then there are others. Like, I think there's a Teresa and I think there's a Kelly Benson somewhere in there, but they're not supposed to be anyone in particular. Gotcha. Okay. I've been peeping on Instagram and just around that, like your show is completely blowing up. It's being quoted by E! News and Wendy Williams and Page Six and all this stuff. 
when you see that, is that just kind of like, oh, whatever, I have to go work on my fifth podcast of the week? Or has it been kind of new that all of this press is happening? And is it exciting? Like, how do you feel about that? I mean, I feel like every time it happens, it's exciting. And then I go back to work. Right. Like sometimes <laughs> I allow myself. So, and again, this is going to sound so jaded and it's not. So like the recent interview I did with like Megan Weaver, she was on Flipping Out. She told this story about Leonardo DiCaprio. It went everywhere. So then when it's in like us, like last night, it just got picked up by, P it's like three weeks later, the story's being, so it's great that I'm in Us Magazine and people and all this stuff, but it's like, okay, cool. But I've been in those before, which I know sounds, so you do get less, I mean, listen, I'm thrilled. Mm -hmm. But then with the Megan story, like two weeks ago, I got an architectural digest and I was like, holy shit. This is like, this is, this, this. This one's new. Right. Yeah. Mind you, she almost felt, I mean, I'm like, you're a designer and you're an architectural digest. And it doesn't say Megan from Flipping Out who works with Jeff Lewis. It says Megan Weaver Design. So like, you're welcome, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and she was like, holy shit. Like, you know, is it, so, you know, that was new. And then like two days later, it was in Rolling Stone. And then out of nowhere today, because I mean, of course, I have myself on Google Alerts. Who does it? <laughs> Out of nowhere today, it was just got picked up by Vanity Fair. And I'm like, holy shit, that's major. So I'm going to post all this. So like, so it's like when it's something new. So yes, the, the E Daily Pop, believe it or not, we were on that before with Constantine when he talked about sleeping with like Luann and Ramona and all those people. Is that the pirate? No, Constantine was the one from American Idol. Remember on the thing they said, you know, you know, we've all been there or whatever. So I had him on and I'm like, what does that mean? And he went, <laughs> and that was, so we were on Daily Pop for that. But like, yeah, Wendy Williams is a huge deal. So like I was, so it's like when something new happens, I freak out, but it's really, it's not necessarily ego. I mean, it, it, it's great. But then it's like, like Vanity Fair. The first thing I do is look and I'm like, do you have a fucking click through? Like, I think in today's day and age, you don't need that. If it says behind the velvet rope and you want to listen, it takes three seconds to go and Google it mm -hmm. and find the show. But if you can click it and it's a different color and that takes you right to the podcast and you press play, yeah, that's a home run. And so like Vanity Fair oh. linked it. So most places link it. So that's really, so it really, again, it is ego and it's great and it's fun and I want to keep being in all these magazines, but it goes back to work of like, okay, I mean, does this help? Like, did the Vanity Fair lead to great right. or is like the random Bravo blog in the back of the corner leading to more click throughs? Okay. It is time to get into some housewives tea, some housewives time. Um, so first question though is, what would your Real Housewives of New York tagline be slash do you already have a tagline? But if you were on Real Housewives of New York, what would it be? Well, I have a tagline for not life, but I have a Housewives tagline for my first and second season. Yes. <laughs> I have it all. Yes. Out. She said, I'll be back for more than two yeah. seasons. That's right. <laughs> yes. I'm at least a two season. No, I think if I were on a reality show, I would be there for a long time because I know what to do, period. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, period. I just yep. figure I would know what to do to stay. I would not be the one right. that was on the verge of leaving. And I would do what I had to do. Mm -hmm. to do you have a limit or you're just like, as long as I'm on, <laughs> it's fair game. I mean, you know, I can tell you what I wouldn't do is like, I wouldn't care what people said about me that were well in the public or on the cast like the thing is like I mean you're being paid to be on the show and you have to do promotion for that and you know I guess in an extent you will but like you're not being paid to sling mud on social media so like the whole half the show is on social media these days. Like, you know who I think is really a good example of what you're supposed to do on a reality show is Countess Luann. Mm, yep. And I don't mean like, okay, she actually had things happen in life that got her far. Like not everyone gets arrested, falls in a bush, gets a divorce. <laughs> like these are actual real things. I am not suggesting she did those just for the show. She didn't. But 
you never see Luann really slinging mud on social media. It's not like, like look at Candace and Monique, like that story is 50% off the show. It's right. on Twitter and reality blurb and Instagram. So you're not getting paid for that. So if you went on Twitter and said, I'm A through Z, I don't think I would really care. You know, like if my job depended on it and I needed to be dramatic and drum up people talking, sure, I would tweet you back. Right. But if I didn't need to, why would you? Like you're bringing this into your, so like you don't see Luann really, you don't see Sonia Ramona, you don't see anyone like coming to cut Luann. And when they make some offhanded comment, if they do, she doesn't cut back. Like she's not, like look at Ramona and Elise. Elise was just on my show on Twitter and like, I don't know. So I wouldn't, I would do what I had for the show, but I wouldn't get down in the mud on social media. Mm. I would just be like, you can say this, but my paycheck already cleared and I'm not getting any more for tweeting you back at 3 a.m. because you're going to respond and I just, and then it's going to be in every paper. Like, who cares? Right. I'll be on set tomorrow morning and I'll bring it. <laughs> I'll come for you, but I, I don't care because this is not what I'm being paid for. Right. That You're would be save it for the, the cameras. Yeah. I think Luann does that really well. You don't see her like get, go there. That's a good point. I never really thought about that. Okay. But we still want to know season one and season two tagline. So, I mean, these taglines are based on me, you know, being a gay man and being cast. It's not like, so put that in context. So let me think. My first season's tagline, because I have to think about this because <laughs> I haven't used it in a while. My first season's tagline would be, I may not be a girl, but I sure as hell fight like one. Oh! oh. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> homage to the women and that it's the stronger sex and it's a show about women. So here I am the first. So you got to You got to I think it needs to play on that a little bit. Mm. Love that. That wow. is first season. That is definitely my first season tagline. That's a good intro. Okay. We also didn't want to leave you hanging. We we're like, okay, if we're going to ask David, we have to come up with ones ourselves. Yeah. So, Ooh, I'm not going to lie. I went through a couple options. I don't know, but okay. I'm just going to go with this one. Okay. This is mine. <clears throat> Five, three, full of tea. And do you really want to try me? That's Ooh. a good one. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> I like it. I love it. I love the rhyme. I mean, listen, I don't know. I, I really just stole mine because I think I would have to use Jay Wow's You Like the Boots because it's just so iconic. I mean, you probably that's couldn't because of copyright reasons, but I feel like that's just so good. So it has to be I like brought that. back. I love that. Okay, so now we're going to get into some... Housewives tea. So, okay, we're going to start with RHONJ, New Jersey. Who is most likely to reconcile and be friends again between Danielle and Teresa or Teresa and Jacqueline? I actually think it would probably be, I can't believe I'm saying, I mean, neither, but probably to uh, Teresa and Jacqueline by like a hair. I almost said Danielle, but mm -hmm. I think Jacqueline. Yeah. I think I'd have to agree. By yeah. like uh, uh, a hair. Well, have you heard Danielle's podcast? She's clearly done with everything Bravo. So I think you're is right. She, is her podcast out like regularly? I haven't yeah. heard it. It is? She's every, I want to say every Wednesday, maybe Thursday, oh, wow. but yeah, she, she has, um, you know, a co-host that kind of prompts her with questions, but yeah, she's like spilling all the Bravo tea. She's like, does not like Andy anymore, all this stuff. And she's yeah. done with all of them. So yeah, I would agree with you, Danielle, um, Teresa. And yeah. Jacqueline. But you know, Jacqueline's got her whole life in what, Arizona, Vegas. I mean, I think if Jacqueline called Teresa, but I don't think she would, that's the thing. I actually think Teresa would listen to Jacqueline possibly. Really? I don't think, I think she'd be more apt to listen to her than Jacqueline would be to call her. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Okay. Thank you. Next. <laughs> RHOA, Atlanta. Why doesn't Marlo have a peach? Why? 
She was on my podcast. She said this on my podcast. She oh. says there's somebody in Bravo corporate, not Andy. She wouldn't say who, but she just said there's someone who just doesn't like me. And I've been told I'll never get a peach. That's but, right. I remember her. It was like a producer or something. Says, I mean, she wouldn't name who, but she said Bravo Court. And she said, like, look, it's fine. Like, I get paid. I show up. Like, I just don't care. And I really believe her that she doesn't care, you know? Yeah. I mean, she, but she brings it. And I guess, yeah, she's still getting a paycheck. So it's better than nothing. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. She's done a lot for that show, in my opinion. So, okay. Yeah, okay. I mean, she doesn't care. And then OC. Orange County, okay, controversial. Shouldn't Kelly have been fired by now? I mean, for me, the reunion was the last straw with her whole comments about Bronwyn being a fake alcoholic. That took me beyond the racial stuff, but what do you think? I think that, I mean, I know what she's doing now. Like, I mean, I get, well, I, I get it. I just think, I just think she's going to be fired regard. Like, I think that Kelly would have been fired regardless of everything she's now doing. But she hasn't been. So what, what do you mean? No, she hasn't been. Um, well, no, she hasn't been. So I understand why she hasn't been. Cause I mean, everything she's kind of done has been after the season has filmed. True. But I mean, now it's like they need to decide what they're doing with next season. So regardless of anything she's now doing, which is kind of doubling down on everything, I think she was going to be fired anyway, but I personally think they're all going to be fired. I think the entire cast is going to be fired. You think there's going to be like another shakeup? How can they do this a season after getting rid of Vicky and Tamara? How are they going to do I mean, like Andy said, a reboot. I just think, I think, I think, and what do I know? I think they're going to fire every single person and hire people that are like the Hills type that would now be in their thirties. And it's going to be a bunch of like really attractive, like they'll be bitchy, like Kristen <laughs> Cavill, there'll be a Kristen Cavallari type, Ooh, an I Adrena type. I think it's going to be like 30. I don't mean like 39. I mean like thirties, like 31 to like 34. And it's going to be a completely different show. And it's not going to be like, any other housewife show and it's going to be like girls from the hills that are Kristen Cavalieri types mm -hmm. Lauren Conrad types with kids bitchy and gorgeous no I think oh. no kids I oh. think we're not gonna see kids I don't know if they're going to rush to do this during COVID but I think it's going to be all about like yeah like what if Lauren and Kristen and Whitney and Audrina and all of them had a show now they would be like 30 something, maybe a little older, but I think that's what it's going to be. I do. I'm, I'm making this up. I have no inside scoop. <laughs> I think okay. that there's nobody that's going to be salvaged. That would be cool too. Cause that's never happened. Like a full cast firing. I just think that, and it's the first one. I think that, I think anyone who thinks that they're now, people are giving their top six, like of who they want back. And I'm like, I don't think this is the direction we're going, where we're mm -hmm. going to be bringing back Heather Dubrow and Jesus Jogs, my BFF. <laughs> and I, I don't think it's happening. I don't think anyone is coming back. So I think Gretchen would do anything to come back, in my opinion. I think Gretchen would do anything to come back. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Speaking of Heather, though, I mean, I, I listen to Heather's podcast. Uh, I enjoy listening to it. But, you know, I guess what it's been a year or two now since her fallout with her old assistant Natalie yeah and I think in the headlines it was like a business fallout you know they had a misunderstanding or disagreement about her next steps in in the role of working for her but what do you think do you have any inside scoop on that do you have any stories on that I I just pay close attention to Natalie is Heather story. still talking about that no she doesn't bring it up Natalie will like she hinted at it once because, you know, Heather's building a house in Idaho now and um, Natalie was oh, visiting, she is? yeah, and Natalie was visiting her fiance Riley's family in Idaho and she like posted on her story that she was going to Idaho and she was like only to see Riley's family, no one else, dot, 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 because Heather was in what Idaho. What the hell does Heather need a house in Idaho for? <laughs> That's, that, thank you, because she doesn't. She's like, oh, you know, I need a place like, you know, it's rustic, it's not like the beach and 
Um, my kids can go to it and just go to it with their friends, like when they need an escape. And it's really- but I don't understand. Like you have the the biggest house in fucking Orange County. <laughs> I know. And you know what? Literally, it's the essential like top rich bitch problem. She went to Idaho because her friend was building a house in Idaho, and she was like, "Oh, this is cute. Let me buy a lot." And she and Terry went and bought a lot, and never. <laughs> I mean, that's all great. I just don't know when she thinks she's going to be in Idaho. Right. She was like, oh, I heard Thanksgivings are really so pretty there. We just know so many people there. I'm like, do you know? (laughs) I don't know. To be honest, if I was her friend, I'd be pissed. Like, you know, you get it. I don't know. I would just be like. Like, I understand buying a place in LA when you go up there all the time. Right. Like, I'm not knocking Idaho. I just don't understand. (laughs) When, you know, I understand like if your mother's elderly and you visit her (laughs) once a month, yeah, that makes sense. But I don't understand just deciding this is where you want to build a house for no reason. It was literally like my friends doing it. So I want to do it too when I can and came up with all these justifications as to why it was a good idea. Interesting. But yeah, so that's the extent of Natalie and Heather's interaction. Okay, let's switch gears. Dallas. If we're being controversial, you know, new housewife Tiffany Moon, Dr. Moon is the new cast member, and the whole controversy of the timing of bringing her on after Brandy Redmond's comments and the video that she made um, regarding r- racial stereotypes toward, towards Asian people. I mean, Tiffany's talked about it, but do you think that was like planned to bring her on now, to bring Tiffany on right after that? I mean, it's kind of weird, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm not saying that she's not a good housewife. Yeah. I mean, it's just what you think that they were like, we don't care who walks through the door. We're not hiring someone unless they're a certain race. Mm -hmm. It's interesting, right? Yeah. And Tiffany claims that Deandra asked her a couple of years ago to come on or last year was like, you should do it. Or last season was like, you should do it. And she was like, no. And then she asked her again and was like, this is the last time I'm asking you to come on. And she's like, okay, fine. But time. It's weird. Yeah. Miami. Is it coming back? Are we getting real hot sides of Miami back? <laughs> well, I think we're starting to think we're going to get it back on streaming, but I mean, it's not going to be like, Marisol and these people. I hate to break it to Marisol, who- I want Marisol. Well, Marisol would cut off both arms and both legs and blind herself to be on. So (laughs) she wants it as much as you want it. She wants it as much as you want it. But I don't think that's where we're going either. I do think that Phil Collins' ex-wife is going to be on it. That's where what people are saying. Apparently she's- interesting and she's lots of money and they go back to court and just I think they've had a nasty divorce I think we might really get it but it's going to be streaming so like I don't know like no one watched Glitter Town with Lydia oh my gosh okay I'm biased because we have the same name but also yeah I mean Lydia was on my show she's lovely but I'm just like they're gonna have to really make sure people watch it on streaming you know so you're saying it's not gonna air on Bravo like normally no, it's going to be on like Peacock streaming. It's not going to be on TV. Yeah. No, that's not. That's no. what I'm saying. So like, don't get too excited. It might be great, but it's not going to be like a nighttime show. Mm. I feel like that's what, like when you get waitlisted from your college that you want to go to, like, why would they even like, it's like, you're telling them that, that Bravo doesn't have the confidence to put it on their normal prime time. Not like what? Why would you? Yeah. Especially if it's like a revamp and they're bringing it back. I would think they would do all they could to market it and promote it at the most popular ways that they could. It's, I don't get it, you know? Beverly Hills, um, you know, I feel like everything's been Erica Jane. So I was going to ask about that, but I actually am thinking I won't. Um, is there anything else we need to pay attention to with Beverly Hills coming other than Erica? Or do you think that's the whole season? Um, you know, I heard that Rena, because we all expect Rena to hold Erica to like the flame, right? Because that's what she does, you know, about speaking your truth and all. You gotta own it. Right. 
Well, I heard that Rinna does the exact opposite and that this is just what I heard. It's not from a reliable source. Um, but I heard that she, which is really that she's so savvy and that she knows Erica is going to be the main storyline. And because she got flack last year for like making Denise fight her truth, that she is going to attach herself to Erica and she is going to actually be the one that sticks up for Erica and says, leave her alone. She doesn't have to talk about any of this. And it's not because producers said, go play it this way. It's that Rinna is such a mastermind genius. She's like, I need to be the center story. And if everyone's going to hate Erica, the way to make myself controversial and to stick out and everyone talk about me is if I defend Erica because everyone expects the opposite, which is kind of brilliant. Yeah. I mean, it's brilliant if Erica is guaranteed another season, which obviously she will be. I think this certainly helps her, right? Yeah. Oh, that's just personally, I'm like, like, like you said last season, Rena was all about, you know, holding Denise's feet to the yeah. fire and making her own up to everything. So it's like, be consistent, but you're right. It's a genius business move. I mean, it's just like, wow. Like, I don't know if I would have thought of that. No, I wouldn't have. Wow. And that's just no. not what you would expect from her, from Lisa. No. Wow. And to clarify, uh, Kathy and uh, Crystal, they are friends of or they are housewives? They are Kathy and Crystal. Crystal is a housewife and Kathy is a friend of okay got it you know unless something completely drastic happens which i don't think it will that is how it is going to play out okay yeah hmm. i think right. it's gonna stay that way i can't see anything changing yeah i'm sure it was just like a, a mountain to climb just to get to this point with having kathy join so that's exciting yeah, and like, I think Kathy, you know, she doesn't need the money. She doesn't need the fame. So I think she's probably thrilled to be a friend of, like, she doesn't care. So we're going to switch gears again to New York and New York. Yeah, okay. This is yeah. David, so Barbara, the next mayor of New York. <laughs> Listen, I, well, I have tried to get Barbara on my podcast and she, yeah, she wants to not, which I get it. She doesn't, I'm like, you should come on because for the last 10 minutes, we'll talk housewives and you could talk about being a mayor for the other 40 minutes. It's a perfect platform for you. Mm. She doesn't want to talk about housewives, which I get it, you know, if you're running for mayor, but uh, I have nothing to say. I mean, <laughs> I'm not expecting her to win. Right. I mean, good yeah. luck, but I don't, I don't, I don't understand it. I definitely didn't see it coming. That was like, wow. It's kind of like I, a Cynthia Nixon moment. Like a I don't moment. understand it at all, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, I, I don't even like, look, I can't even speak. Like it's just, I'd say, <laughs> you know? Salt Lake good. City, season one is done. We're about to have reunion part two. So have you heard, David, have you heard this audio from Mary Cosby's church congregation, the leaked audio? I did because I have someone coming up from Salt Lake this week on my podcast. Ooh. Okay. And I asked her about it. I heard it. Did you hear it? Yeah. And just for listeners, if you haven't heard it, um, Mary is, is she, is she the pastor or is she the, she's the she choir director? The pastor, yeah. Oh, she's the pastor. Okay. She's basically on this audio. Um, we don't see her. It's just audio, but she's basically screaming at her congregation talking about quote, you old stingy selves, I got 14 birthday cards, you old poor people, I don't want no poor people around me. And that's just part of it. Right. And she said, if you're not poor, then you're cheap. And that's even worse. Something like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I heard it. I asked someone who came on my show who's coming out this week. This person, of course, is has some media training and is like, you know, not for me to say and I've talked to her about it and it's taken out of context and I mean I don't see how that could be taken out of context no oh my god I hate you know? that response 
I mean, I do have to say, I my gut says that every single person is coming back. I think Jen or Mary would be the two to go if they were going to get rid of anyone. But I think if they were going to get rid of anybody, it might be Mary, but I don't think they will. And I really think the cast is coming back unchanged and they might add a friend. That's my prediction for that. I agree with you. I hope that that is the case. I want to see everyone back. I was surprised yeah. you said Jen because I feel like as crazy as she acted a little bit, I feel like in a way that's what the cameras want. So yeah, I back. but I want Mary to come back because I want her to have to talk about that. Like that was crazy that what we hear on that audio. So. Yeah, it was interesting. I want her to answer for that. I'm still not over like episode one or two where the whole stuff with Jen's aunt, that drama. And I don't know why, like random comments that they make will like annoy me more than others. Like when Mary was said that thing about her, Jen's aunt having diabetes and maybe she should have ate less sugar or something and she would have her legs because she had to get her legs amputated. To me, like that was below the belt. Other things people say that like are probably below the belt. I'm like, oh, that's funny. But that like, oh, it's like Mary, I don't know but well we shall see on that okay all right margo what do we have next okay well i think we should jump into a little just a little bit of the bachelor because that is my that is my world and i want to do it i want to talk about victoria because i mean the sensation of the season truly she's eliminated i don't know if you peeped but the day she was eliminated, she deleted her Instagram. I heard. And, and then like February 10th, like a few days ago, she came back with a new business launch called Victoria Larson Beauty, which is all about like self-love and nutrition and all of these beauty po- products. And I just think it's so ironic considering the fact of the way that she was portrayed on the show. I mean, do you have thoughts about that? And also, is she a paid actor? Which I think is like really the question. I mean, that seems to be going right. I don't think she's a paid actor. I think- That would be fantastic acting, by the way. If I mean, was. I think she's there. <laughs> she knew what she was doing and she came for Instagram followers. And, yeah. you know, uh, do I think she deleted her Instagram on purpose to make it even more dramatic and come back? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I get it. I'm sure she got a lot of hate, but I think yeah. that she deleted it not because she was sad, but for a dramatic effect. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm sure like, because when she came back, that was even more news. And now she's got this business, which it's literally like you can pay for one-on-one coaching with her. So I just don't know what this business model is it's gonna be interesting she's I feel just like, like let me capitalize on this right now yeah i mean for sure i think she's really like probably the most iconic like bachelor villain that we've had in a while i think so like she is just she's I love, I, i'm i'm I, i'm here for it oh me too i, I loved her best. i mean i was yeah Okay, and I forgot to ask this, David, back to House Dodge really quick. We're going to play a game before we finish, if that's okay. okay. With you. But did you say you were closest with Dolores in terms of House Who's your close, closest friend out of the wives? I mean, you know, it changes all the time. You know, like Dolores, Margaret. I mean, I've really gotten to know Lisa and Meredith really well. Stop. You have. I'm really close to Alexis, Jesus Drugs. Really? I'm close to Lynn Curtin, really. You know what I mean? So like, it kind of just, it depends on a lot of things. Hmm. That's a blast from the past, Lynn. Oh, Lynn is a sweetie. Wow. She did always come across really nice on the show. Right. Wow. Okay. And Dolores seems great. I don't know. I've always loved the family aspect of New Jersey. Like from the beginning, I was like, I love, I I love that they keep it in close friends in the family. Totally. It's crazy. The whole thing about Dolores being, what was she? A, a, a youth juvenile officer or something? What did she do? She worked in prison? She worked in the prisons and that sounds like it's correct. I don't even know the exact title, but that sounds like it's correct. <laughs> That's why she knows how to fight with her words. On yes. The show. Okay. We have a game. It's kind of like a would you rather, but 
we're switching it a little bit and it's going to be where would you rather be and we're going to give you two different housewife scenes and you have to say which one you would have rather been witness to okay let us start with the real housewives of new jersey brownstone fight throwing it back or real housewives of potomac barn fight between candace and monique which one would i rather be at Mm -hmm. just to like witness it yeah like you're you know you're there as a guest you're there as a plus one you're on camera um Probably uh, the brownstone, probably. Yeah, that was pretty iconic. Just because it's iconic. Yeah. <laughs> You're like outside of the brownstone on the side with Danielle. <laughs> yeah, I just think that that, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. But you know, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a close one, but probably the brownstone. <laughs> All right, next one. The Real Housewives of New Jersey hair pull sore fight, which I watched today and that was wild. Or the Real Housewives of Atlanta Kenya Portia reunion physical fight. And what was the first one? It was the New Jersey hair pull sore fight where she pulled the white that, tail. I think I'd rather be at that. <laughs> that was wild beyond belief. I. I think I'd rather be at that, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay, now back to Real Housewives of Potomac Knife Fight at Candace's house, Candace and Ashley, or Beverly Hills Game Night from like early on in the season. I'm so close to Dana Wilkie now in real life. Like we speak a hundred times a day, Miss $25,000 sunglasses. So Beverly Hills, I mean, I know Dana. I've asked her about that on my show and 100% Beverly Hills. She really spilled the tea about that night. On your She's show. coming back too. She's coming back. Is she still like covering everything Erica Jean? She's covering a lot of stuff. I don't really keep up because I don't even understand half the stuff she says, but I am like more power to you. Call me when it's something that I need. But I literally call her when I need like a question answered sometimes. I'm like, is this? Like, please save me hours of having to, like, research this, and she will just throw it to me. Mm hmm Okay. All right. The Real Housewives of Dallas Carrie's birthday party or any Kyle White party? I'm going to go with Carrie's birthday party. I love Leanne. That was not what I expected you to say. Wow. I mean, I love Kyle, too. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to show some love to Dallas. Yeah. And Carrie's so fun. Like, I want to take a tequila shot with her. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. This is like, to me, this is this is the question. I'm hyping myself up. So please, please act excited, David. <laughs> but I am excited. OK, OK. Andy's baby shower or any season of any Housewife franchise reunion taping. Andy's baby shower didn't even hesitate no, okay why I, I literally don't even know what uh what uh i didn't even need to hear um what you said it, oh it, it was no, like it was is andy's i, I could have stopped you <laughs> i mean that is like any bravo lovers like dream that is where to be that baby shower right that was an iconic baby shower that 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 trumps like everything. Margot, that baby shower, Andy Cohen. That literally will trump everything, yeah. Yeah, he had a baby shower um, for his son and all the current housewives from every franchise came, including John Mayer was there. It was like a random group. Mishmash of people. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, if you know, if you love housewives, it's like, oh my God. Oh. Yeah, it, it was, it was, it was something. Dang. Well, just a few more. Real Housewives of New York City, any Berkshire's trip, or the Real Housewives of Miami, watch what happens live reunion. <laughs> Probably Miami reunion. I mean, that's, I could do without a bunch of those, but probably Miami. Just you know, was, there wasn't many of them. I'm like Ramona. I would prefer the Hamptons over the Berkshires. Mm -hmm. So. 
I'm okay with missing the Berkshires. You don't need like a Blue Manor moment? No, Blue I could Stone do Man. without Blue Manor. I could do without, I could do without Blue Stone Manor. <laughs> I wish Dorinda the best of luck. I'm I'm okay, you know. When you put it in context like that, and we would be staying at Dorinda's, um, yeah, I'm gonna pass. <laughs> He's like, we, no fish room for we me. We can just leave it at that, but I will gladly pass. And, yeah, you know, okay. I mean, my girl Heather Thompson down the street. I that might be something different. But if you're saying I have to stay at Dorinda's, hell to the no, <laughs> Miami reunion, one hundred. <laughs> 100. Oh, that's good. Okay. Real Houses of Orange County, the party in Vicky's backyard where Tamara threw the line on Gina, or New York City, the trip that they took where there was the man in Heather's room the next morning and Luann's iconic, don't be all and cool, be cool. That's a hard one. Tamara, I had my podcast, we talked about the wine throw. Probably the trip, be cool, don't be all uncle. I mean, it's one of the most classic lines ever said on the Housewives. But that throwing of the drink in Gina's face, that's a cool, that's a good moment. That's a good moment. But I would probably go away on the trip. The trip. Hmm. All right, well, last but not least, the Real Housewives of New York City, Aviva leg throw or the Real Housewives of Orange County bunko fight? Oh, definitely the leg throw at Lassart. That is 100. <laughs> the only 100. thing that's big about me. <laughs> and Harry Dubin on my podcast said that, I guess he was, I don't remember if he was on camera, but apparently he was there and Aviva asked him to carry her out. This is all on my podcast, he said, and I, think it was like it was planned he was saying you have to listen I'm not even trying just to get you to listen I don't want to misquote but I think Harry was like off to the side and Aviva was like I'm gonna do this when it's done I'm gonna carry you out and Harry was like I am not carrying you out <laughs> so do what you gotta do but I'm not interested in that and then he didn't but I think his point was that she planned it. I mean, it got picked up, got picked up in the press too, as you could imagine. Yes. Something like that. But somehow Harry Dubin was there, and I don't remember seeing him on camera. So I think off camera he was off to the side, maybe, or maybe we saw. I, I don't remember him on camera. I don't remember him. Yeah. Being yeah. Like at that table, because they showed you know people. Well, sitting he at the he was there somewhere. Wow. Yeah, I I would have to agree. I think being there would be pretty pretty yeah. crazy yeah oh it, it was the way she delivered the line too i could see how it was pre-planned because it was too good it was too good right uh, okay we gotta ask where can everyone find you first of all on social media where can they like follow subscribe do all of that business all of that exciting stuff so everyone can follow me at behind velvet rope there is no the in the title on instagram I mean, on my Instagram, that is. So it's at Behind Velvet Rope. And the podcast name is Behind The Velvet Rope on Apple, Spotify, anywhere you can find a podcast, Google, Amazon now, Behind The Velvet Rope, or follow us on Instagram behind at Behind Velvet Rope. And all the shows every day, Monday through Friday, there is so, you know, we had Elise Slane this week. Her picture goes up, her bio, we talk about it, Patty Stanger. I post every day who the guest is. So if you follow us on Instagram, you'll know who the guest is or just find us on Apple, Spotify or anywhere podcasts are found. And I just locked in next week. Next week's going to be another good week. We do have some Salt Lake coming for you next week. Yay. So that's kind of exciting. I'm really excited about the guests that we have on. Amazing. And here's a teaser. I don't know when this is going to go out. This will be if, out Monday. Well, I can tell you, I don't want to say too much about who is on from Salt Lake. But let me tell you that it is not one guest. It is two guests. And only one of them is a housewife. So that you can think about. Next week, we have a Salt Lake housewife and someone else who's there with this housewife. Mm, well, and like John Barlow popped by when Lisa Barlow was on, but this is not that. This is a full-fledged interview with two people from Salt Lake. As in one of them isn't even 
have we seen them on the show at all? You have seen this person on the show, yes. Okay, what a team. One is a housewife. <laughs> so that is coming and it's it's a good one. It's mm. it's a good one. Yes, we cannot wait. Okay. There are some shows that I'm just like, this is good. This this one is this one is good. So that's next week. Yes. Mm. Is this a one part or two parter? One parter. Oh, get everything yeah. in one part. Not even an hour and fifth, like an hour and five minutes. Easy listen. Oof. Amazing. Okay. Our very last question, David, it wouldn't be no other way to end this except for the way you do on your show. And that is, is there anything else you want to say or feel like that we didn't cover that you want to bring up tonight? And that's, yeah, I never used to do that. And then one day I did it and I'm like, you know what? See, that's what I mean. Like you do something and you're like, this is my new thing. I'm going to end with this all the time. What a great question to ask people. Um, you know, I don't really have anything out of my mind. I think just that, you know, listen, if you like Bravo and you like other reality shows and you want to hear five interviews a week, come to listen to Behind the Velvet yeah. Rope. I mean, I think people that, you know, listen, this is the last thing I'll say, like people that describe my show, they're like, you know, you have a relaxed, casual, way about you. And I think it relaxes people and gets people to talk. I mean, that's just kind of my style. Like, look, I will ask you out on the date. I will take you out. I will pick you up. I will buy you dinner. I will buy you drinks. I will drive you home. I will open the door. I will treat you like a pure gentleman the entire date, but then daddy wants up. (laughs) So that's how the podcast works. I guess I relax people and we just chat and like out of nowhere, we ask something and then it's a little interesting. And then we can just talk about something like maybe the weather. And here's another question. I'm just going to slip in here. <laughs> You're going to have to answer it. I mean, like, and you don't have to, but everyone does. So I, I got things. Listen, if there's stuff to get to the bottom of, I get to the bottom of it. Mm. So I think, I don't know. I just have a style of being like, relax and let's just chill. And then by the way, you know, Candace, when your head was down on the table and, you know, Monique was holding it there, what was going through your mind? And, oh, hey, Leanne. So, yeah, I mean, I love the fact that you're drinking like grape Kool-Aid with vodka in it. But we have one more question. Like, are you racist? Really? Because <laughs> like, these are the people that say you are. And here are the things you said to carry on air. So like, how do you reconcile not being racist to the fact that you said all these things? Mm. Those are just some examples. So I... We'll ask the questions. I'm not afraid, but you know, we still have a good time. Mm, I love it. So, I, I don't know. That's, I guess my wrap up, my plug for myself, but no, it's a really fun show. And I think if people want to hear from Bravo celebrities, we have, and we don't do just current, like I will track your ass down. <laughs> you haven't been on the show for like 10 years. I will find you and you know, you will come on. We have like Millionaire Matchmaker. We had Jonathan Anton from Blowout, people from Ladies of London. Like we like to go back to the classics. Mm. You will, and one day, I bet you'll have like a Long Island princess on from way, way back. Why are you saying that? (laughs) Why not? You have everyone. Well, we might, there might be some stuff coming. Oh (laughs) Oh, yeah, I thought you were saying that because of some particular reason. Is that your way of asking for a princess? Okay, we have, we might have some stuff coming for you. I mean, just you're the gift that keeps on giving. No, I was just thinking of throwback shows, but amazing. That's, listen, we might have, that's a good one. Oh, might have something for that. Well, you're the best. Listen, we, we like to keep you on your toes, but trust me, princesses has not been overlooked. We, we, there's just hang in there. Just hang in. Mm-hmm. See, I've given you two basic spoilers. <laughs> we appreciate it. Yes. But yes, I think princesses was a great show. Yes. Uh, I miss it, it had so much potential. I know it was early on, you know, they had to work out the kinks and all that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I mean, if I did have someone on from Princesses, we would cover why did the show not come back and what really happened. You know, we would get there. Mm. So, Oh, yes. You we know, would be ready and waiting. I love it. I will come back on here any day you guys want me to. Yes. Maybe Next time I'll drink. I won't be as exhausted and have so much work to do. <laughs> yeah. And maybe, so you know, we made, we made the cutoff before, you know, you stopped answering DMs. So we have to be part of that group now. And yeah. listen, I'm all talk. I'm not going to stop anytime soon. But the other day I was like, I am going to have a nervous breakdown if I don't stop it. <laughs> I will deal with that when the time comes. 
Well, we, we love you. You're the best. Yeah. Thank you so, so much. David Yontef, everybody. Thank I you. I love you guys. Invite me back Thank anytime. You. I'd love to come back. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Bye. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. He was amazing. I mean, T, 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 Bravo, T, Bachelor, T, you name it. We talked about it. We talked about it. I feel like I vomited up all my housewife questions. Margo, I really thank you for bearing with me because I <laughs> oh my gosh but no he really is so sweet and nice and he works so hard you can tell he has such a business mind and five shows a week I mean we're every other week so we know how hard that we can imagine how hard that would be oh yeah <laughs> but for sure that was awesome well just because it's a guest episode doesn't mean we're not going to give you our quotes of the day the week the two weeks um and we do know Valentine's Day just happened. Mm -hmm. So we're going to give you a couple Bachelor inspired quotes from none other than Queen Victoria herself in honor of V Day. So my quote from Victoria is He is, oh, context. This is right after Victoria got eliminated from mm. The Bachelor with Matt James. He is not my king, and I'm still a queen. <sighs> Thank you, Victoria. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I have to follow it up with another Victoria quote because <laughs> it's Victoria and we love her. Um, and this is no matter if you have a Valentine or not, just remember your quote team is a bunch of queens and their team, AKA your opponent's teams is a bunch of gestures. Not jesters, but <laughs> gestures. So, you know, just take that with you, that, that little inspiration, that beautiful use of the English language with you wherever you may roam in these next two weeks. That is so funny, Margo, because I was like, isn't it jester? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Wow. Uh, yes, take that beautiful advice with you for the next two weeks happy valentine's day happy president's day if any other holidays happen i don't know i think that's it but we will see you in two weeks and thank you for watching as always bye bye and that's the show stalk us on instagram at popoffsis.podcast and check out our pop off sis youtube channel we'll see you next time pop off pop off sis